What goes on in the German soul? A new novel takes a look at typically German terms and sensibilities and tries to answer, is it possible to reconcile yourself with being German? Thea Dorn is an expert on the German psyche. It's the topic of her latest book, Die Deutsche Seele, The German Soul. The meditation on German culture is a local bestseller. One of her chapters takes aim at Germany's extraordinary love affair with the automobile. So it's only fitting that that is where we meet her. I think for Germans, cars are about freedom, but it's not an idea that actually fits to Germany. Germany is much too small, too squashed together to have autobahns without speed limits. It is odd, odd enough so that it has to mean something. The contradiction between the yearning for freedom and the stern demands of discipline, those are the dichotomies that capture the essence of what it means to be German, Dawn says. They're an industrious and organized lot, but they're also gripped with a longing for a grand emotion. And they've long been reluctant to call too much attention to themselves, also because the crimes committed under Nazism remain a heavy burden on the German conscience. I remember times in the 1980s, in Norway, maybe France, where they didn't exactly scorn me, but where it was clear that the curtains were being drawn because I let on I was German. I loved it when people in Italy assumed I was French, or when people in New York spoke to me in English. But in the U.S. she was soon told there was no point in trying to hide it. Even the attempt to hide it proved how very, very German she was. They were convinced that our amusing cosmopolitan airs were an utter delusion, and in fact we were absolutely very German. And while living in the U.S., Thea Dorn began to realize firsthand how deeply ingrained it was, the culture, habits, and rituals of being German. It was Easter, and I found myself missing the St. Matthew's Passion, so I went to Amazon.com and ordered a copy so that I could at least blast St. Matthew's Passion while I drove through the forests of New Hampshire. Even today, three centuries later, Johann Sebastian Bach is regarded as one of history's most brilliant and influential composers. But his music is more German than even Bach himself probably realized. You can really hear it in Bach, for example. In the St. Matthew's Passion, when the chorus starts to soar, it's a riot of emotion. But at the same time, Bach is incredibly rigorous in his compositional organization with his contrapuntal movement. That's so very German, this simultaneous yearning for order that can even tip over into pedanticism alongside this sense of an inner abyss that we're bubbling and seething with something that we can't bring into order, can't articulate, something that forces us to even more strenuously seek order within the chaos. Thea Dorn and her co-author Richard Wagner journey through history to explain the why of the German soul, so orderly and precise, yet so filled with a yearning for excess and chaos. And they make some surprising discoveries, too. In the Middle Ages, Germans were seen as these drunken, chaotic, crazy people. The idea of German order, that didn't really emerge until after the Thirty Years' War, in the late 17th and then the 18th century. And that's what makes this book, too, so very German. It takes a German to subject the murky depths of its inner spirit to such meticulous and organized soul-searching. <laughs>